Here are 10 of the highest paying finance jobs in 2022. At number 10, we have compliance and advisory at an average salary of $65,000 per year. Starting salaries for middle office roles like those in compliance have lagged the growth in the salaries of front office positions, which we'll talk about later in this video, but they do remain stable and banks continue to beef up their function. So even though it's not the highest paying job on this list and people might not necessarily like you all that much as a compliance officer, you know that you have some job security with this. Before we jump to number nine on the list, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Financial Edge. Financial Edge is an online training platform for finance careers, and it's utilized by all the top investment banks to train their associates and analysts. Many of us know that one of the hardest parts about looking for a new job or switching jobs within the finance field is getting the necessary experience you need to apply to the role you wanna get into. And that that's where Financial Edge can really help. Their online classes are designed to provide the exact same experience and education that you would receive in the day-to-day -day responsibilities in some of the most popular finance positions out there like investment banking or equity research. If you're considering using Financial Edge, please make sure to use my promo code AJ25 at checkout to get 25% off of your order. It's really a good program and I get a revenue share if you use that promo code AJ25, so thanks a lot. Number nine on our list is an internal auditor with an estimated average base salary of $81,000 per year. Trust me when I say that accountants are really in demand right now, not only at the big four accounting firms, but in every single investment bank on Wall Street and elsewhere. Number eight on our list is an actuary with an estimated average base salary of $95,000 per year. Now the path to becoming an actuary is a grueling one with the certification exams taking anywhere from three to six years. People who are able to pass all the actuarial exams are usually the people who were the best and brightest math students in college or university. If you're wondering if those actuarial exams are more difficult than the CFA exams, the answer is no way, but maybe I'm biased. Number seven on our list is a risk analyst with an average estimated base salary salary of $100,000 per year. Risk management salaries in the investment banking and broader financial services market have been on the up and up in recent years. Now I think quantitative risk analysis is on the verge of becoming commoditized by AI, artificial intelligence, but there are still many positions in this field that need a personal touch. Number six on our list, and this may surprise you that this one is coming so early on, is an investment banking analyst. As an IB analyst, you can expect to earn a base salary of about $120,000 per year, but you should also know that maybe more than half of your compensation can sometimes come from stock on deals that your team is working on. And honestly, since the start of the pandemic a couple of years ago, corporate finance activities have been running at record levels. So investment bankers are in high demand and they're very busy. Right now, I think the third highest paid IB analysts are capital market analysts. Then you probably have mergers and acquisitions at number two and IPOs at number one. You should also know that because of the increased activity that has come with investment banking in the last couple of years, the once already grueling hours from what I've heard have now only become more difficult. Where 80 hours a week was sort of the norm previously and 100 hours a week was, you know, your worst nightmare, but you had to do it every once in a while. I've heard that 100 hours a week is becoming more and more common, which is unbelievable, honestly, when I consider the position I work in at 40 hours a week. I can't imagine what it takes to be able to do a job and do it well for 100 hours a week, week in and week out. Now that we're getting to the top five, keep in mind that all the jobs on this list, like with the last one, the base salaries are gonna vary a lot based on location and your level of experience. So the numbers I'm quoting aren't gonna be perfect, but the point is to give you an average estimate of what a base salary expectation could look like for each of these careers. Number five is sales and trading with an average estimated base salary of $140,000 per year. But a lot of your compensation in this type of a position will also be performance-based. So it really matters how well your trading activities actually work. Now in 2020, a sales and trading role may have gotten like to the top of this list because of the huge amount of market volatility we saw. 2021 and so far sort of in 2022, things have been a little quieter than they were in 2020. So when there's less volatility, usually there's less room to make profits in trading. It's gonna depend on what the market's doing. And the position is gonna be pretty different depending on if you're trading for a prop firm, an investment bank, or maybe a hedge fund. So there's a wide variety here. They can all be really interesting careers. It just depends on what you sort of are most passionate about in the market. Number four on our list is a private equity associate with an average estimated annual salary of $160,000 per year. I know a few guys that work in private equity, commonly called PE in the finance field, and it sometimes can be considered like the sexiest job in all of finance. People love doing it. 
the hours are not necessarily what they were in investment banking, and the job can be extremely interesting as well. Also note, the compensation you receive as a private equity associate could be especially favorable from a tax perspective because you have the potential of being paid carried interest, which is interest earned from the profits of the LPs, limited partners, the investors in your private equity fund that you're working on. Carried interest is tax favorable and it can really boost up your income, but you normally have to have at least a handful of years of experience in PE before you get to the level where you start receiving it. Number three on the list, algorithmic trader at an average annual estimate of $175,000 per year. When we talk about algo trading, we're really only referring to just a handful or maybe a dozen different firms that operate this type of way. Jane Street or Citadel are a couple examples. There's a reason why this is a different line item than the sales and trading positions we talked about earlier. Really, you're just coding algorithms rather than analyzing financial markets in an algorithmic trading role. And these jobs are not easy to get into. They're few and far between. You have to be basically a genius, but when it works, it really works. So it's number three on our list. Number two on our list, at an average estimated annual salary of $500,000 or more per year, is a multi-level marketing mentor. And no, I'm not talking about some lame pyramid scheme. This is a real business with serious upside potential. Like in any good business, you gotta sacrifice a little bit in the early years, you know? It's gonna be a grind, man. So with a small initial investment of just $1,500, you can start buying your merchandise from the supplier and begin turning real profits. We have a great supply chain already established that I can hook you up with, no problem. This job is all about building your business, providing value to your customers, but ultimately freedom. And then the real juice starts to come when you begin mentoring other business owners. If you can bring in three or four other guys to work with you, you start to share in their profits too, just like any good business owner would. And notice I said your associates would work with you and not under you, because this is not some lame pyramid scheme. My buddy Tyler got me started in this business. Neither of us have turned a profit yet, but his big brother has about 90 other business owners under him, I mean, in his network, and he's grossing over half a million dollars per year. So if you wanna get out from that nine to five job that you're stuck under, you need to get in on this. Okay, number one on the list is a real job this time, I promise. I wanted to preserve the sanctity of this list by making number one something real and then making number two the, the troll position. But number one on the list is working at a hedge fund, being a hedge fund analyst. This will give us an average estimated base salary of $190,000 per year. Now hedge funds are becoming increasingly keen on developing talent in-house based on their own strategies, but they're always gonna require at least five, probably 10 years of experience in IB or P E or something like that before you can get into one of these positions. There's a big variation in pay. I've heard of some funds that are actually 100% bonus, meaning maybe if you performed poorly yourself or potentially if the entire fund performed poorly for the year, your total compensation could be $0.00. I don't know if that actually ever happens, but I have heard that there are structures like this. Wall Street Oasis and eFinancialCareers.com both comment on hedge fund analyst positions that after many years of experience, there are plenty of people earning over a million dollars per year. So this position definitely keeps number one on our list. Thank you very much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you haven't already, please like it and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate both of those things very much. And as always, thanks for watching.